I did a video a couple of days ago about the phrase, uh, what was the phrase now? Something to do with everything is connected or being one with everything or yeah something like that. It was, it was that kind of a sentiment based on this uh, article in Scientific American by Wade Davis that I've had some problems with. And what I was basically saying there is that uh, you know this phrase which is uh, you know, reflects a certain kind of philosophy that's attributed very often to non-Western free state societies uh, that this 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 people this uh, set of primitives live in a state in which they are one with nature that's usually the phrase one with nature and what I was basically saying in that video is that yes yeah, so what you know um, apart from the slightly spacey gobsmacked relationships that idea uh, that's not that's not unusual. I mean, that's the situation we have in the West as well. Western science says we're also one with nature. It just says a lot more as well, and it explains the systems that, that make that thing one, and also make it many, and also make it a dynamic system, and so on. So I was basically just saying that. Uh, and that got me thinking about other phrases and uh, kind of examples of non-Western philosophy or aphorisms koans, that kind of thing, which, um, you know, I don't know, maybe it could be interpreted in Western terms, in Western scientific terms, to see if they hold up, or if there's a way of, of me with my secular, sceptical imagination, so I can still make use of them. And the one that I'm work, <laughs> thinking on right now is a phrase from a Chinese philosopher and writer called Wai Wu Wai. Why woo? Why why woo? Why? Yeah, that guy. Uh, and he says this. He says, "Oh my, I got this wrong. Actually, it's something like, in my absence as me, you are present as I. In my absence as me, you are present as I." I got this really nice collection of stories at home, actually, by another writer, which has got that quotation as the, you know, and the. You know, what it's called, the introductory page. It's a series of dialogues between an owl and a rabbit. And maybe I'll read one at one point. But it, they're, it's, they're kind of little Zen stories. But as I say, it begins with this quotation from Why Wu Why. In my absence as me, you are present as I. Now, is there a way of naturalising that to the Western scientific imagination? I think there might be. Kind of. Kind of. Uh, Certainly within, if not the scientific method, but in the uh, the protocols of scientific writing, there is this custom of not using first-person pronoun. You don't say I in a piece of scientific writing. You say you, you use a passive voice. You say the experiment was carried out, or this procedure was undertaken, that kind of thing. You don't say, you know, I did this, I did that, I found that, I discovered this. You, you leave the I out of it, you pluck out the I in favour, as I say, of the passive voice. And the idea of that is, it isn't, I mean, it, it, it is sometimes used just as a, a kind of um, authoritative flourish. But the idea of it is, is philosophical. The idea of it is that the, the, the kind of um, statements that you're making are not subjective. They don't... Uh, orient themselves around a narrative centre of gravity, you know, formed by this spindle of the eye. You're, um, you're at least aspirationally, you're trying to find statements and truth claims and facts about the world, which are true. Whoever says them, and even if nobody says them, they're still true. You know, if you were doing some really bog standard piece of um, elementary school scientific research. You might ask yourself, you know, what temperature does water boil at, at sea level? So you trot down to the ocean with your test tube and your Bunsen burner and your bit of water and your thermometer and you do the test and sure enough you'd find that it boils at 100 degrees C. And when you write it up, you wouldn't say, I found that water boils at 100 degrees C. Dogs are chasing rabbits. Uh, you would say, the experiment was undertaken and it was discovered that the water comes to a boil at 100 degrees C. You leave the eye out. And it's left out specifically, as I say, to avoid the, um, you know, creating that subjective focal point within it. 
that um, highly perspectival, highly viewpointed position that eye statements are always made, always claim. So by doing that, you um, at least aspire to the condition of objectivity in which that truth is true, whoever says it. So whoever you are, you can trot down to the ocean to test you and your Bunsen burner, repeat the conditions, and you'll come up with the same result. So look at that from the position of this statement from why we why. In my absence as me, you are present as I. You, um, you carry out some scientific procedure and then you step out of the process, you evacuate yourself from the process, you remove the I from it, you, you take me out of the equation and absent yourself. So me is absent. But then when it's handed over to anyone else, anybody else, who repeats the same process, the, um, the I becomes present but the results are always the same. Whoever the I is, whoever you are, whoever the you's are that walk down to the coast with their test tube and their Bunsen burners, the result is notionally always the same. So in my absence as me, you are present as the I that arrives at the same conclusions, whoever you are. In my absence as me, you are present as I. Yeah. Not great, but I'll do for now.